What is up, my intergalactic friends? Today, we're going to talk about, is cruisers really the best in Infinite Galaxy? Well, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of the frustrations that I have here. I'm very frustrated with cruisers because I am a destroyer. Um, even though I love being destroyer, you know, destroyers really melt a frigate. And I've, you know, defended myself against cruisers. But in majority of the part, the game do focus a little bit more into cruisers. And I guess this is where the real kind of like when we talk about meta type of thing is that cruisers do have a significant advantage within the game in terms of in the PvE situation. Because on the PvP standpoint, everything is fair and relatively even because of the um, sequence of um, you know advantages and disadvantages between all warship type. All right. So today, um, cruisers is the very main topic of our video. Cruisers are pretty interesting because they are the longest range when we're fighting. So when you're going to be battling in a PvE situation, for example, your team has cruisers, destroyers, and frigates, right? All these in the situation, let's say you're attacking the egg in the purity protocol. I assume everybody that is watching this game right now have an understanding of the game and what is purity protocol. And if you don't know what purity protocol is, you will be able to find out what it is. So just keep in mind in here that the shortest range will be the frigates. You can actually verify that from here. You can see the range of five. And then you can go into the destroyers, which is going to be the range of 10. And you can go into cruisers, which is the range of 15. All right. So with that range, um, the meat shield comes from frigates, destroyer, and cruisers. Even on a PvP standpoint, this is how it was previously until they have fixed. I want to remove my glasses. Till they have fixed the battle mechanics to where that is not the case anymore. Back then in the previous version of Battle Mechanics, I'll just say Battle Mechanics 1.0, it is better to have a lot more cruisers because then you are the, you know, the range guy that would attack, you know, those frigates and destroyers first because they can't get into the within range yet. So you can also say that this still is applicable in certain events like Purity Protocol, all right? Cruisers is not not a bad approach really if you are you know new into the game and you're really looking into something to get into i would say cruisers is the safest bet cruisers will give you a lot of lead um, you'll be able to win events you know score higher with events especially if you work into increasing your range well we're going to talk about that in specific um, flagship that will allow you to increase your range um, if you are then focusing on the way i did i went for destroyers god knows why i don't know i don't really know why i went for crew destroyers um, I think one of the reasons is I saw Hades and I like the you know the moving speed of Hades. I like everything from Hades, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go for destroyers, and hence I have become a destroyer setup. So destroyers is really great. I love it, but there's a lot of downfall with destroyers, uh, struggles on events, and um, we're gonna kind of tackle that today. But I think I don't need to make a more specific video regarding destroyers. Now, forgets is amazing. This is the tank. Right, we need to understand. Right, you need to look into some of the statistics as well in here of destroyers, cruisers, and frigates. Now, frigates are typically more under the tank. We have the Artemis, you know, flagship that boosts even more of the tank ability of the uh, warship frigates. So, frigates low range, right? This is going to be the meat shield if in a PVE situation. When terms of in terms of purity protocol, but. Uh, in a PvP scenario, as we know, the first thing that gets attacked is the one with the same range, and then the one that you disable, and then the one that is disabling you, all right? So let's go and talk about Lost Ark Cluster. For example, in this event, it is actually a struggle in here being a destroyer. If you are a cruiser, imagine you're just battling your own kind pretty much. Right, so there were like situations where there were a bunch of you know full cruisers in there that I had to defeat, and it was really very annoying for a destroyer fleet setup. I think what is uh, most beneficial in here in this event would be um, frigates, but of course the cruisers are kind of like in that tier, which is not a bad you know approach. But I think you know frigates is the best in this situation. But cruisers, I'm telling you, is a good investment for majority of the player. Before we get um that before we get deep into the investment in here on the flagship, one thing I want to tell you in here um, right away is that when you are investing into your flagship 
um, I want you guys to take a mental note of what I'm going to say here. And um, don't twist my words or anything because people in this game loves to twist my words, especially certain people that I have met in the game. Now, one thing I want to tell you is when you're investing in your flagship, invest on something that you want, not in something what other people want you to get. This is a game, it's your game, your, your account, maybe you're spending, maybe you're not, whatever it is, it's your time, it's your effort, it is your thing. When I make videos in here, I give you guys suggestions and it's up for you guys to decide what you guys want. So one of the reasons why I said this, because I've invested on Hades and a lot of people do not like the destroyers because, you know, it's not the most beneficial with events and stuff, but it's a really good PVP ship. I like the navigation speed of the Hades, you know, huge navigation speed, increased uh, fleet leadership as well. So the big thing when you're starting into the game, find a flagship that you think that will relate to you as a player more than what it could relate to other people, all right? But in a terms of success, I would say uh, Brontes is definitely a really, uh, in terms of success, if, if we're talking about legendary ones in here, Cyclops is definitely one of the best ones to have, and as well as Brontes. So those two flagship will give you a long way or grant you a long way into the game especially in events like purity protocol even when you are going for like defend the galaxy when you're trying to attack those um, arrays and those other things cruisers always have a great advantage when it comes to the pve situation now how can you become the best cruiser setup this is a big thing if you want to be the best cruiser setup you want to increase your range how can you increase your range? Big, big, big question. So take a look into a flagship called Athena. Athena will give you a um, ability to increase your warship range to 25.2%. Now, there, there is another flagship that will give you that same concept it would be, um, it would be, I think it is Nemesis which is right here, which is Nemesis, which is going to give you a 12% range at the max level. This is going to be for those, you know, maybe not spender free to play ones. Um, for bigger spenders, you know, you can go for Heptasius, um, Hepestus, sorry. Um, you can increase your range in here as well. As you can see, 12.6, not as much, but still gives you a little bit of a range boost. But Athena do give you a significant range boost of giving you that 25.2% range boost. So with your cruisers, if you are running with Athena, you gotta imagine this, every cruisers that are in front of you are your meat shield by then, and you're in the back. They have to go, um, basically if they, there's an enemy, they have to go through and clean up the, 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 the fleets that are in front of you before they can clean you up. So what's happening as well is that you, on the very back end, is dealing all these damage you're getting away with it, and you're inflicting a lot of kills towards to the opponent. So basically, in score-wise, you are getting most of the score by having longer range, right? Longer range, if we think about this in a more simplistic point of view, the longer range, let's say somebody is having a pistol versus somebody who has an AR-15, who do you think will be able to hit you know, each other first, right? The AR-15 will be able to hit... Uh, compared to somebody who has a pistol. So that's the same concept in this um, in this um, scenario with this game. There are multiple you know flagships that's going to be able to increase range. There is also a uh, flagship in here that is called the Titan, which is you try to compete for the Galaxy Star event and you can get 25.2% range as well. So range is a you know big thing in this game, plays a major role. If you are a cruisers and you have range, then imagine that in a PVE situation where um, the scenario of cruisers to hit cruisers and then cruisers hit, you know, destroyer and then, you know, cruisers hit forget. It's unapplicable when the scenario of range to range only cruisers do dominate significantly. And when you boost your range, you will significantly boost your result in the battlefield. So cruisers is definitely, you know, a meta um, you know, a good meta to for players to really get into starting out. But I think if you really want to have a lot of fun, right, you can try to um, obtain other, you know, flagship and build other warship like Hades and um, even Artemis. So another thing that I want to mention in here, um, 
you know, why cruisers do dominate significantly because um, there is a thing where, you know, cruisers attack forget bonus. Now, we know that forgets do hit harder on cruisers, but with the Cyclops, it kind of leveled that advantage out against the forgets, right? But still, a significant advantage towards two destroyers, you know, against me, right? So you're probably going to ask me, why don't you just invest in a cruiser? Well, because in my team, a lot of people also have cruisers already. So when there is a PvP scenario, a stacking scenario, right, they will be the shield before it goes to me. My job is to clean up the destroyers, to clean up the frigates, and then when we clean those up, I get to clean up the cruisers as well with alongside with the team. But also, like I said, I just really enjoy having Hades and I've already maxed it out. So that's pretty much where my stand in here. But at the end of the day, cruisers, definitely very good. Dominating, great, um, you know, great investment to get into is cruisers. So I'm actually trying to build into cruisers. I don't know if you guys see in it. I've got my T10 cruisers. We're building up. Um, one of my biggest regret is maybe trying to reset Brontes, but I think I'm gonna have to get back into, um, you know, working on Brontes again. So we will see. I don't really, I haven't really made that decision yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I do have a lot of um, XP currently, so I'm just sitting on that right now. All right, so I, I have a maxed out Brontes. I reset it because I needed that to get my Hades because I just love my Hades. But anytime when I really, really need it, I have enough to really um, level up my Brontes. So I, I'm a little bit more cautious on what I do. Um, so everybody got their own different strategy. Um, so it's just been over over two weeks, I think, where I reset my um, Brontes. But I think I'm going to bring it back and um, set it up with another, you know, another fleet in here. So I haven't really fully decided. So if you have any suggestion, let me know in the comment section below. But besides that, guys, cruisers, very good. No doubt. Get it. If you're starting out, I think it's a good thing to um, to start with. So anyway, my intergalactic friends, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next time.